<sighs> Very good looking, eh, man? Hmm. A turtleneck, a pair of slim fit black chinos, and a pair of sleek looking red shoes. Finish on top with blazer and a final few touches of accessories such as um, this watch that I have right here on my wrist and a set of ring and a necklace. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Muhammad Safi Buzikirli and today there will be another couple of speakers and there are Mr. Daniel and Mr. Anas and they will be joining us in today's speech. Well, what is it about today's speech? Maybe you guys can figure it out. Right from the very moment where I showcase my outfit. Well, save the time now. Actually, today's topic is about clothing. What is it about clothing? Well, to be exact, clothing in our daily lives, you know, like the type of clothing, how we put on clothing properly and all that. So um, I'm gonna just briefly explain what clothing is. So um, let's be definite right here. What is actually clothing? The definition. Well, clothing is actually items worn on the body and they are typically made of fabrics or textiles and clothing has seen evolution as time over time it has included garments made from animal skin or thin sheets of materials being put together and the wearing of clothing is mostly restricted to human beings and is a future of all human societies and that explains why you don't see animals wearing clothes literally <laughs> and clothing is a part of our essential needs in our daily lives as it serves many purposes. Well, talk about purposes. To kickstart this aspect, um, clothing serves as a protection from many elements such as rough surfaces, rash causing plants, insect bites, splinters, thorns, and prickles. Now, you guys may wonder, how is that so? How clothing can act as a protection from those kind of elements? Well, here's the thing. Clothing provides a barrier between our skin and the environment around us. Apart from that, clothing um, also insulates against cold or hot conditions. And that explains why during the hot weather, you guys uh, must wear, simply just put on a bright, a light color t-shirt so that it will reflect the sunlight and not absorb the heat and maybe you guys can put on a pair of shorts so that uh, it is breathable at the bottom and finish with a pair of sneakers well what's it about cold condition or cold weather um let's just say it's snowy outside and the temperature is very low maybe even below zero well you guys can put on a jacket better yet a wool one a thick one so that you guys feel comfy warm and comfortable enough and maybe you guys can put on a long trousers a thick one and finish with a pair of boots. I think that should do. Mm -hmm. And clothing can also provide a hygienic barrier where it keeps infectious and toxic materials away from our body. Last but not least, clothing also provides protection from ultraviolet radiation. Well, let's put it this way. Um, you know, it's very hot outside, it's very sunny. Like, literally, the weather is scorching hot. You guys put on a t-shirt, a long sleeve one, and you guys spend a couple of hours outside, and 
upon getting back home when you guys are about to get undressed, you guys can actually notice or see that there is a like the part where your body was uncovered back then when you wore that t-shirt. Um, maybe this part, from this part to this part, you know, it's kind of tan, right? Well, there's ultraviolet radiation where it kind of like burns your skin. And maybe to tackle that situation, you guys can put on a t-shirt, make sure it's bright and light color so that it will reflect the sunlight and you guys can also feel comfortable and it's cool enough and breathable so that it will protect your skin from getting that ultraviolet radiation so that you guys won't get half tan you, we pre i'm pretty sure that you guys don't want that isn't it it's weird looking to it, that kind of appearance and yeah talking about clothing there are actually many types of clothing there are sporty classic streetwear and casual and you guys should wear these types of clothing accordingly to the occasions and there are many occasions based on the clothing there are sports occasions weekend daily or even the office well sports occasions let's put it this way um, you guys are about to get outside with a bunch of friends playing football well maybe you guys can put on a jersey well that's not actually very necessary perhaps a t-shirt should do a pair of shorts and finish with a pair of football shoes with you know with, with the spikes underneath the sole and what about during the weekends well during the weekends, this is actually where most of the time you guys have outings or even dates. Maybe you guys should put on some uh, classic outfit. Maybe you guys can take this blazer off and you know you can just simply put on a turtleneck and this pair of chinos they will do. Perhaps even a a uh, long sleeve shirt with uh, buttons. What about daily? Well, daily is very essential to us as we just simply, you know, sit at home and do nothing whether we can actually wear whatever we want. <laughs> but let's put it this way. Um, I'm going to give you guys an example. Uh, maybe you guys can put on a just really a simply plain white t-shirt that doesn't really matter, a pair of shorts or track shirt that will do. I mean, you guys <laughs> really know how to dress yourself upon being at home, right? Come on. <laughs> and last but not least, office. Well, maybe you guys um, can be smart, can be casual, just like me. You know, all formal, very good looking. And I appreciate that your office colleagues will uh, fall in love. Nah. <laughs> Um, talking about clothing, well, there are many clothing, well, actually to be exact, fashion icons. And, you know, in my personal extent, my most favorite one is Alex Turner, where he puts on a t-shirt, a bottom one. Uh, this side is unbottomed, you know, kind of showing your neck. It's very, man, it's very hot. And a pair of slacks finished with a pair of chuka boots and with a top of leather jacket that looks mainly as hell you guys should check it out in, on google <laughs> unfortunately i'm not alex turner i'm just a wannabe <laughs> well i think pretty much they should wrap up this whole introduction speech and i should pass it down to my other speaker and he's taking over from now, so stay tuned, yeah. Assalamualaikum and good evening to Prof. Jamie. Uh, my name is Anas Isaham bin Ghazali. So for my part, I'm going to be talking about the uh, how to fashionize uh, yourself. But before that, let me introduce you the history of fashion. 
As you know, there wasn't much fashion in the 19th century. Uh, the only fashion back then was tailored and soon clothes. Uh, during this decade, uh, freely puffed blouses and fluted skirts uh, were the bomb. Uh, for a large part of the decade, uh, the fashionable silhouette continued to be uh, dominated by the S shape created by a new half corset. These corsets push the butts forwards and the hips back in a attempt uh, to avoid pressure on the abdomen. Uh, in the late 19s, uh, the Western world continued the severe long elegant lines of late 1890s. Tall, stiff collars categorized the period as do women's broad hats and full Gibson gold hairstyles. A new columnar silhouette uh, introduced by the contouriers of Paris late in the decade signal uh, the approaching abandonment of the corset as an indispensable garment. And as for children's that day, girls wore dresses of knee length with trimmings at the hem such as lace embroidery similar to women's lingerie dresses, normally black shoes or button-up lace-up boots and woolen stockings went with the dress as well as kidskin or crochet gloves. Their hair was generally worn long and curly with decoration of ribbon. Young boys found comfort in a Russian-style simple blouses, so in my opinion, I prefer something modern and bought this type of fashion. Now, let me tell you a bit about the pop culture decade. The pop culture started in the 1970s when people started introducing themselves uh, to some pop bands, for example, the Beatles. The followers of folk and psychedelic rock bands dressed in bell bottom jeans. Uh, and casual shirts with bold patterns such as paisley or floral landscapers. For most women, wearing cotton or polyester knit high-waisted and white length pants in pastel colors paired with a tunic top, button-down blouse, or snug knit shirt was a daily fashion. Simple and comfortable Pants dominated most of the 1970s uh, for both dress, uh, for both days and dress evenings. There are some pop icons back then that were the faces of pop culture, which is uh, Stevie Nicks, Jerry Hall, Joanna Lumley, and many others. Now, getting back to the big topic, how you can fashionize yourself for occasions that needed you to be a metrosexual man or being a guy who can suit themselves, whether it's going to be a business one, meeting, or a party. Going on to a business casuals, you have to be more picky on this one. If you're going on a meeting, you have to know what kind of meeting it is. Appropriate business casual dress typically includes slacks or khakis, dress shirts or blouse, open color or polo shirt, optional tie or seasonal sport coat, a dress or skirt at knee length or below, a tailored blazer, knit shirt or sweater, loafers or dress shoes that cover all or most of the foot. Some people get confused whether they can wear jeans or not. Jeans are usually considered business casual with some exceptions. Business casual Business casual jeans should be clean and in good condition, free of any tears, fading or fraying. Avoid bright colored jeans or styles that have flashy details in favor of classic styles that you can pair with accessories or layer as needed. If you are going on a party, make sure you put on something casual for it. Casual attire typically means that anything goes, but leave the dirty. You don't have to follow the ripped jeans fashion. Pull out your best jeans, the darker the better, with a nice shirt or sweater. Men and women put on nice shoes. And please, for men, please put on your socks. You're going to a party, not the grocery store. But you have to know the color matches yourself. For example, if you're going with a red shirt, 
try yourself with a black jeans and a pair of blue sneakers. They fit very well. Second, how you can upgrade yourself with some accessories to make yourself more spicier. First, you have to know what type of accessories there is. There's chains, there are watches, there are rings, a hat, or maybe some piercings. Um, but you can't wear all of them at once. You have to know your occasions. If you're going on something a little bit formal, uh, maybe you can try wearing a tie or a bow to make yourself more representable and slightly elegant. Uh, if you're going out for a party, you can slip on some chains under your neck uh, to make yourself noticeable. Some guys do it to attract girls to them, but some girls were to make men noticeable of them. So we can see this as a life cycle. <laughs> Third, you have to know what weather is going to present itself today. The fashion goes when the weather started to change. If the weather is hot, Optional for clothing made of breathable materials such as cotton, linen, or a jersey. This fabric will not constrain your body or cause you to sweat in the heat. They are also great for staying cool and put together even on a hot weather day. You may look for dresses, tops, skirts made of cotton or linen. And if you're going out on a cool, sensational weather, start with a pair of fleece tights and a cozy flannel shirt. If you don't have any flannel shirt, you can try it with a denim jacket. Then layer on your favorite jeans or cardigan. Go for a trendy wrap style wool coat and pair of practical winter boots to keep out the cold. Lastly, accessories with an infinity scarf, warm gloves, and a neat headband. Lastly, the fashion industries uh, give some big impacts on many countries. S uh, many countries have their own fashion uh, and design. For example, American fashion is eclectic and predominantly informal, while Americans' uh, diverse cultural roots are reflected in their clothing, particularly those of uh, recent immigrants' uh, cowboy hats, boots, jeans, um, and leather motorcycle jackets are em emblematic of uh, specifically American styles. If you go to England, in general, day to day, European style is more dressier than American style. This does not mean business clothing when deciding what to wear in England. Think dressy top or the type of top you wear to work, plus nice, nice jeans. Dark colors are always a good choice. Slim or skinny fit jeans are the preferred denim option. In our own country, Malaysia, we have our own fashion. Commonly, most Malaysian follows American and the other countries' fashion, but Malaysian have a fashion culture that can go far in the fashion industry. For example, uh, traditional Malay attire for men is the baju mayu, a loose tunic which is worn over trousers and usually accompanied with a sarong called sampin, which is wrapped around the hips. It is also often accompanied with a songko or kopia. Malay women wear the baju kurung, originally the term baju kurung, referred to the both uh, men and women's attire. The older, the older fashion uh, definition is still maintained in Singapore. The clothing for baju kurung are knee length blouse worn over a long skirt. The blouse is long sleeved and collarless, uh, while the skirt called a kind has pleats on one side. A headscarf is something worn with this. Another popular traditional costume is the kebaya, a more tight fitting two pieces dress. Uh, this is often considered less formal. It is worn by the uh, female flight attendant of Malaysia Airlines. So I hope you understand my points and I'll pass uh, it to the next speaker which is uh, Mr. Irfan Daniel. Assalamualaikum and greetings to the ones watching. So I think it's only Prof. Jamie watching. I'm Muhammad Irfan Daniel and you can call me Dan. So, 
as we all know, clothing has many departments, one being cosplay, which is dressing up as one's favorite fictional character. So, how can cosplay um, affect your daily clothing, I hear you ask? Uh, cosplay can be involved in our daily lives with it being a job and improving our creativity, hence increasing our fashion sense. But what is cosplay? So, cosplay is an act of dressing up as one's favorite character from their favorite movies, uh, live action series, animations, books, and mostly from the Japanese genres of mangas, which is a genre of Japanese comics and animes, which is a term for animation in Japanese. So, cosplaying, it's a hobby born from a pop culture from Akihabara way back in 1970s. Cosplaying got a huge exposure when it's um, shown on televisions during 1990s and also in magazines that the term cosplaying became something common among people in Japan. But all in all, let's go way back to the pre-15th century where the true origin of cosplay where it's still called fan costuming. Well, it is from masquerade balls as a feature for the carnival season, but later on it extended into public festivities during the Renaissance for people of the higher class. But the first people to wear costumes to attend conventions were science fiction fans Forrest J. Ackerman and Myrtle R. Douglas, known in a fandom as Morjo. They attended the 1939 First World Science Fiction Convention in the Caravan Hall, USA, dressed in futuristic costumes, including green cape and breeches, based on the pop magazine artwork of Frank R. Paul and the 1936 film, um, Things to Come. Designed and created by Douglas, Ackerman later stated that he thought everyone was supposed to wear a costume at the science fiction convention, although only both of them did. Cosplay costumes can vary greatly and can range from simple themed clothing to highly detailed armors. You can go as simple as um, dressing up as Finn from Adventure Time, where you can just wear a shirt and a pants. Or you can go as detailed and as complex as wearing an armor from the game Monster Hunter. It is generally considered different from Halloween or Mardi Gras costume wear, as the intention is to replicate a specific character rather than to reflect the culture and symbolism of a holiday event. As such, when in costume, some cosplayers often seek to adopt the effect, the mannerism and body language of the characters they portray with, some out-of-character breaks of course. It is also a part of the ethos or you could say the code of cosplay that anybody can be anything as with gender bending, crossplay or drag or a cosplayer playing a character from another ethnicity or even a hijabi portraying Captain America. Cosplay represents an act of embodiment. Cosplay is closely related to the presentation of self, yet cosplayers' ability to perform is limited to their physical features. The accuracy of cosplay is judged based on the ability to accurately represent a character to the body, and individual cosplayers frequently are faced by their own bodily limits such as level of attractiveness, body size, and disability that often gets in the way of how accurate the cosplay is. But as time moves on and society grows better, some have argued that cosplay can never be an accurate representation of the character. Instead, it can only read through the body, and that true embodiment of a character is judged based on the nearness to the original character form. Cosplaying can also help some of those with 
self-esteem problems and in my personal experience as a cosplayer it really helped me gain my self-confidence throughout my four years of cosplaying and now um, moving on um, I'm gonna talk about where do cosplayers get their cosplay well cosplayers obtain their cosplay through many different methods manufacturers produce and sell packaged outfits for use in cosplay with varying levels of quality of course these costumes are often sold online but also can be get during events or conventions from dealers who are boothing over there a number of individuals also work on commission creating custom costumes props or wigs designed and fitted to the individual other cosplayers who prefer to create their own costumes still provide a market for individual elements and various raw materials such as unstyled wigs, hair dye, cloth, sewing notions, liquid latex, body paint, costume jewelry, and even prop weapons. Many cosplayers create their own outfits referencing images of the characters in the process. In the creation of the outfits, much time is given to detail and qualities. Thus, the skill of a cosplayer may be measured by how detailed the cosplay and the outcome will be. Because of the difficulty of replicating some details and materials, some cosplayers often self-educate themselves in woodwork, textile, sculpture, face paint, fashion design, and other uses of material in the effort to make their cosplay more more accurate. Cosplayers often wear wigs along with their outfit to further improve the resemblance to the character. This is especially necessary for animes and manga or video game characters who often have a naturally colored and unique hairstyle. Most cosplayers also wear contact lenses in order to match the eye color of the character that they're cosplaying especially anime and video games characters because if you all watch animes and video games the characters often have a rather um, unnatural or otherworldly eye colors am i right moving on i'm going to talk about the profit in cosplay because for your information cosplay can also be a job or an occupation even though cosplay is considered as a huge pop culture, some people tend to look down in cosplayers because of being non-profitable and considered as weird from back then up until now. My friends and I share the same experience of getting asked, why do you even cosplay? You can't even make money from it. And a lot more statements like cosplaying being a waste of time, waste of money and energy, but in the present, a lot of job scopes related to cosplay have been discovered, yet haven't really got a lot of exposure. From being a prop maker up until as huge as being a cosplay model for huge gaming companies. As for Malaysia, cosplay jobs are one of the common thing among cosplayers. Cosplay jobs are one of the best part as being a cosplayer. You will usually get hired to attend events like birthday parties, company celebrations, or even official gaming events like world championship tournaments and so on. Other than that, cosplay will also gain profit from joining cosplay competitions in events or even an international level cosplay competitions like World Cosplay Summit, which gather funds of cosplayers from around the globe and compete with each other's skills to be a winner. And now we're gonna move on to the last part of my speech, which is cosplaying for fun and how to start cosplaying. In my experience as a cosplayer through my four years of cosplaying, cosplay have brought me nothing but joy. Of course, there are a few struggles here and there cosplay is having to face throughout like making an armored cosplay and the burnout after finishing the cosplay but the effort given results a great outcome 
and it always cheered them up to see their own cosplay finished. I've helped some of my friends in cosplay prop making and I experienced the same thing. Furthermore, when you go to cosplay conventions and see an ocean of cosplays, you get the feeling of excitement flowing through your body as you see everyone's amazing cosplays left and right. Moreover, when you cosplay in public, you receive quite an attention and from people walking by and mostly by kids when you are cosplaying a superhero character and the joy you see on their face just puts a smile on yours as well. Lastly, most cosplayers will usually get these questions from their friends or even fans. How do I start cosplaying? Well, in my opinion, to start cosplaying, first you must be confident in yourself and just take the leap of faith. It's okay if you look silly during the first try because no one can make perfect out of first tries, am I right? Well, even I look silly during my first time cosplaying and I never stopped until I look like these. So, don't give up and chase your dreams and be happy. That is all from me, Mama Ifan Daniel, the third speaker of this speech. And to conclude the speech, to wrap it all up, um, Seth talked about the various types of clothing and there is for fashion, costling and also to be hygienic. A lot of types of clothing ranging from casual and sporty to even costling like me. And the second speaker, Anas, talked about how to fashionize yourself for business and for casual clothing and how accessories can add more spice to your fashion and how to fashionize yourself to suit the time and weather well you wouldn't want to wear jackets during a hot sunny weather won't you and as for me the third speaker i talked about how cosplaying affects your creativity the origin of cosplay the profit you can make from cosplaying and how cosplaying for fun and how to start cosplaying. So that is all from me. Assalamualaikum and thank you for watching.